I'm just gonna turn it on and see what it does. Hope it's cool. Ooh, look at that, that's good. Fire good. Hey, thanks for joining us here at Faraday Studios once again. I'm Jake Wizard 4. Yeah, it's me. The old man is still alive and kicking. You know, we're cleaning up around here because I'm getting old and I've got to make an inventory of all the materials on this 200 year old collection we've got. And we stumble across things we forgot we had. You're experienced people, you're worldly people. You've seen one of these before, right here. It says on here, date 1188. So it's what, third of a century old. What I want to do is find out this 60 thing. It says 60 HZ. Now, HZ is Hertz, cycles a second. So now you know what it is, right? Mm. Well, those are called insulators, and it's connected to some wire. And then wires are close together here, but they're not touching. And it, and it looks like the gap gets wider as it goes up. 110 volts from the wall are coming into this uh, plug down here. Oh, it's got an insulator on it, too. I'm just going to turn it on and see what it does. Hope it's cool. Ooh, look at that. That's good. Fire, good. Now you know why we didn't throw this thing away. Everybody should have one of these. It's a way to make uh, cook hot dogs and uh, marshmallows very rapidly. I told the guys in the studio it was a uh, speed flosser. You just stick your mouth right up here and it will clean your teeth. Just pow like that. I'll turn it off there. I'm not gonna touch this thing now. I'm afraid it might have a charge bill. That's why I'm using the plastic uh, thing here. On the box, it said, a plasma generator. Another thing written on the box said Jacob's Ladder. And then it said a neon sign transformer. I wonder which it is. Well, it's all three actually. 120 volts goes in in the primary. 15,000 volts come out. This is a transformer. <laughs> now here's a, some facts you might want to know. Let me turn it back on. Those are highly charged particles going up there. Whee! And typically, uh, you know, when you think of electricity, you, you think of blue sparks because of the nitrogen and oxygen in there. When they get excited, they'll give off a blue color. I can see a little bit of blue in the background, but we're getting this yellow from the uh, whatever material these rods are made of. And the reason it's called a Jacob's Ladder, that's an old scriptural story about the ladder that came down from heaven, you know, that glowed. And that's what this represents is that ladder climbing to heaven. And of course, it's rising because that's very hot. It's between five and 10,000 degrees. That's the same temperature uh, as the surface of the sun. So I looked it up today. What's the safe voltage for a human to touch? 36 volts. So this is 120 volts right here. So this will take you out. But what I wanted to do is to figure out this 60 cycle thing. What's that got to do with it? And someday we'll come back and we'll take one of these apart so you can see what it looks like. But actually there's just two coils of wire inside here. That's all there is, two coils of wire, the primary coil, probably a fat, a heavier gauge wire, and just a few wraps of that. And that induces electrons to flow inside the secondary coil. But for some reason, it has to tell you that it's cycling at 60 times a second. It's a change in, in voltage. You go, eh, 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 60 times a second. It's not the current itself, but the change in current is what induces the transformation. So it has to go on and off, on and off, on and off, on and off. I mean, how could I show you? I could stick my finger in there and say, it's on, it's off, it's on. No, it happened too fast, 60 times a second. So here's the way we're gonna do it. This is an official, look here, General Electric Spark Gap. And this is actually the way they would send signals, like on ships, you know, the Titanic, they were going t -t 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 -t. And you could pick up the static on a radio miles away. And that static would go on and off as they hit a telegraph key. So and that's how they'd send their signals. So I'm gonna take this apart. Well, you can see what we've done. I've removed the uh, rabbit ears, the wires from our transformer and replaced it with an official uh, spark gap. It's made out of wood, a non-conductor, of course these two little pylons right here, and these metal rods with the neat little balls on the end of them right here, and they're adjustable so I can adjust the gap. I'm gonna turn on the switch and we'll get a nice uh, spark. Okay, we'll try that again. We'll get a nice spark. No, hmm, let me think about this. Why didn't that work? 75,000 volts it takes for an inch spark to, oh, all that's between there is air, right? And this is only 15,000 volts, so it's not strong enough to make the arc. I'm gonna put some foil on my little plastic point here so I don't get shocked. Because once I get the spark started, instead of the spark traveling through normal air, it's traveling through very hot air. 
and it doesn't take as much voltage. Let's see if this is gonna work to ignite the spark. It did. Who's smart now? The wizard figured that out. But it's interesting that I had to help initiate the spark just by uh, shortening the distance to get it started. But still proving to you, or at least trying to demonstrate that that spark is not continual. It's going on and off 60 times a second. Here's the way we're gonna do it. I'm gonna take a piece of paper. First of all, I've gotta find out, will the spark uh, go through the paper? You know, kind of burn up. So I, the first thing I'm gonna do is, is I'm just gonna, oh yeah, it goes right through. But you won't believe what I'm seeing in this paper. There are a slug of t a little bitty holes and there's a space between the holes. It looks like machine gun fire right here. So what I'm gonna to try to do is to pass this paper through here in one second and see how many holes are burned through the paper. Ready? One Mississippi. Oh yeah. I'll try, we'll try to make this visible. There is a row of dots. This is sweet. Let me try with some uh, darker paper. Maybe I could shoot some light through this and we can see the holes. Now this is neat, I can actually see it really well. It looks like, it looks like a little miniature airplane flew by here with the machine gun going like that. In one second, if there's 60 holes here, I'm gonna freak out. 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57. I got 57 holes in here. 57 holes, in. that's pretty close to 60 cycles a second. Who? Ah, good. I have, I have nothing left to say. This was really cool, wasn't it? And I want to thank you for stopping by and, and sharing the excitement with us here at Midnight Science Club. You're always welcome. Whether or not you're a Patreon member, but our Patreon members are especially welcome, but everybody is welcome here, so don't, so don't worry about it. And if you really do like what we do, uh, you can subscribe huh, to Midnight Science Club. You'll see us on YouTube, TikTok, and Instagram. And obviously, I'm not, personally, because they don't allow me because I show people how to burn holes in paper. So you have to keep me caged up. Because you know, the motto here at Midnight Science Club is fire good. And this was like a little bitty fire. Really good.